Welcome to CAD Tutorials and in this video I'll be doing practice problem 12.8. This is probably the last problem which I'll be doing in this chapter. So we're given two balance nodes and we're given 840 VRMS uh, 60 Hz line. And we're told that one of the loads is Y connected and it has an impedance of 30 plus J40 ohms per phase. And the second load is a balanced three phase motor drawing 48 kilowatts at 0 0.8 lagging. And we have quite a few things which you should find. So let's do them step by step. The first question is asking us for the complex power, which is absorbed by the full load. Okay. So let's break this down into load one and load two, and therefore the total or the full complex power, the total complex power for the full load will therefore be the addition of those two. So let's start with load one. Now, in load one, we're actually told that this is Y connected. And here's what we know about our, our Y load. The, the line current is equal to the phase current, right? But the line voltage is equal to square root of three of your phase voltage. So how can we actually use this to find our complex power? So for a load, we know that three multiplied by the magnitude of your phase current squared multiplied by the impedance of the load, right? Per phase will give you your complex power. So this three is to multiply all of these phase, uh, the complex powers of the phases. So when we multiply by three, we actually covered the whole load. And this is for load one. So now we have that, it's given to us in the question. Our task is to find this over here, which is our phase current. So to do that, we are actually going to use the formula, which says IL is equal to VL divided by square root of three and ZP, which is 30 plus J40 given to us in the question. And here's how this formula was actually formulated. So we said the phase current and the line current for Y load are equal. And you know that the formula for your line current is VAN. Let's say we, we were dealing with phase A, VAN divided by your impedance. So this is your phase voltage. And in the question, we're actually given the line voltage. So to find the phase voltage, actually you can say phase voltage is equal to the line divided by square root of three. So this is your phase voltage for a wire connected load. So here, that's what you have over here. So VL divided by square root of three symbolizes this part at the top of the equation. And this at the bottom is just simply that. So this is your formula to find your line current, which is the same as your phase current. So after finding your line current, you're going to find the line current or the phase current, which are basically the same for a while load. The value is going to be 9.699 with an angle of negative 53.13 degrees. That is in amperes. Now we're going to take this. So let's denote this as the complex power for load one. So as uh, sub, sub L1. And that is going to be 3 multiplied by the magnitude of this, which is 9.699 squared. And we're going to multiply by the impedance per phase of 30 plus J40. And this is going to give us the complex power, which is associated with load 1. And the value you should get should be 8466.35 plus J112.88.5. 4, 7, and that is in VA volt amperes for your complex power. So this is the complex power which is associated with load one. So it's 8466.35 plus J11288.47 VA. So that is the first part, or that is for load one. We now move on to load two. So let me create some space. I'm just going to erase this and create some space for us to find the complex power of load two. So now move on to load two. 
right? Moving on to load two, we know that we're given the average power of that load or that motor. So the motor is the load for our load two. And we're given the average power as 48 kilowatts. And we're also given the power factor of 0 0.8 lagging. Now we asked to find, so already have one component of your complex power because your complex power is P plus JQ. This is the reactive power. This is your real power or your average power. So already have that. Our task is now to find this one over here and just substitute into this formula. So to do that, we know that Q is equal to S sine theta. Now, to find this theta, we're going to use our power factor. So cosine of theta is equal to 0 0.8. So our power factor is equal to cosine of theta equals to that. So theta is equal to arc cosine of 0 0.8. So that is our angle. And actually going to substitute it in there. But we don't know this S over here. So we're going to use our given average power. So average power is equal to S cosine of that. And this is our power factor, which is 0 0.8. So S is equal to 48K, which is this average power, divided by 0 0.8, which is this power factor. So this is going to give us our apparent power, which is going to help us to actually solve this problem, right? So after, after doing that, we we come back to this formula over here for our reactive power. So we're going to substitute this value in here to find the power for our. So this is actually going to give you 60k. Right? It's going to give you 60k VA. This is your apparent power. Now we're going to find our reactive power, which is the only thing which we have left to find. So 60k multiplied by sine. And the angle, which is associated with this, I said it was x cosine of 0 0.8. Just substitute this or put this into your calculator to actually find the value of your reactive power. And the reactive power which you should find for your second load should be 36k VAR. Now that we have the reactive power and we have the real power is given to us in the question, you know that for load 2, your complex power is therefore 48 plus J36, and that is in kilovolt amperes. Now adding this value for our second load to the value of the first load is going to give you the answer for the quest first question, which was asking for the complex power of the full load. And after adding those two, which is this and the one which you previously found, you're going to have a value of 56.47 plus 47.29, that is kilovolt amperes. So this is your complex power for the full load. Now I'm going to move on to the second part of the question or the second question, so second subsection. It is asking for the KVAR rating of each of the three capacitors which are delta connected in parallel, and this is to raise the power factor to unity or to one. So to do that, you basically just have to find the, what's this? The rating or the reactive power, which is associated with the following formula. So from our total from our total complex power, if you take that total complex power and you convert it into polar form, right? Taking the angle of that polar form of this answer over here will give you an angle of thirty-nine point nine four degrees. And this angle is the same angle which you're going to use in this formula. So let's find the angle for unity power factor. This is for our current power factor. So for a unity power factor, this is what we're going to have. So power factor is equal to cosine of theta. This is our new angle which we want to find. So that new angle, we want to find a power factor of 1. So that new angle is going to be equal to 1. So finding that is going to give you 0. 
you need zero in here to have a power factor of one, right? So cosine of zero is one. So now that we have that, we're basically going to substitute it back in here to find this reactive power for a new power factor or the rating, as, as they say in the question. So this P over here is your total average power from the, from the first part of the question, which is 56. Point uh, four seven k. And then you're going to multiply it by ten of the old angle, which is thirty nine point nine four degrees. Subtract ten of the new angle, which is zero degrees. This is basically zero. So all you have to do is just multiply these two to find your rating. And this rating is the total rating. It's it's not for each of the capacitors, but the question is asking for the rating of each of the capacitors. So we're going to just put each down here and divide all of this by three because we're told that we have three capacitors which have to be delta connected in parallel to the load for the power factor to be raised to, to unity. So for each, you now divide this value or this answer by three. And the answer which you should get after dividing that by three is 15.7 kilovolt ampere reactive and this is your rating and or this is your answer for the rating of each of the three capacitors that are connected in parallel so that that was the second part of the question moving on to the last part of the question we are asked to find let's see you have to find the current drawn from the supply at a power factor of unity or power factor of one so I said the new angle for power factor of one is zero. So which means, so we know that the, the average power is S cosine of theta and the reactive power is S cos uh, sine of theta. So substituting zero in here would give us a zero reactive power. Substituting zero in here would give us P is equal to S, right? Because this becomes one. So the only effective element in our complex power will now only be this real power. So how can we use that to our advantage? We're going to say P is equal to square root of 3 VL IL cosine theta. This is basically 1, so you can omit that. And we're asked to find the current drawn from the source, which is this value over here. So IL is equals to P divided by square root of 3 VL. And know this P to be the total average power which is uh, associated with the load and that was a value of 56.47k divided by the square root of 3 and here you have 840 which is your RMS line voltage given to you in the question and that is basically all you have to do the value you should which should you should get for your IL or for this current drawn from the supply at a power factor of 0 should be 38 0.813 amperes and that is basically all for this question if you like the video please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe